No better way to start a video out than looking at some delicious Italian ice. There's a strong European influence here in Saudi. Okay, so we're continuing our series discussing the types of work that you'll do when you work overseas contracting jobs, the different types of jobs. And we're starting out with IT jobs because it's the type of contracting that I have spent the most time in. But I have done other contracting work before I got into IT. Um, I actually transferred into the IT world later in my contracting. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the other types of work that I did later in the series. After years of military contracting overseas and I'm getting ready to retire, I thought I would pass on the information that I learned over years of working abroad to inspire others to reach out, check out the world, see the jobs that are overseas and learn something about yourself. But we finished the first uh, stage, which is gonna be your desktop support uh, that people tend to get into working in IT uh, for the military, doing overseas contract work and working even in the United States uh, at military bases and things along those lines. And now we're going to start talking about some of the other jobs that are in that IT uh, sphere. Okay. Uh, right now, and for the last so many years, I've been working as a network administrator. And I want to talk a little bit about what that is. What is that? What does it mean? And what are you doing as a network administrator? Okay. So I, I want you to imagine that you have all of these users that are around a base and they're using laptops, they're using desktop computers, tablet devices, uh, they're using Cisco phones that are connected at their desk. Uh, there are also Cisco phones that are just connected in general, maybe mounted on the walls and things like that. Every building on your base, all of these devices, these end user devices, they are connected back to network devices. And that's where all of these end user devices aggregate, okay? And you'll have switches that are mounted in the buildings that gather all these devices up and make them all be able to communicate with the network. Those switches that operate that building, okay, that connect that building, and you might have switches on every level of a building, depending upon how large your base is. Out here, uh, working overseas, a lot of times everything's just one level. Sometimes the buildings are, are sort of like reinforced tents, okay? But they have network switches in them. Those go back to a room or to an area on your base where all of those switches are now communicating, okay? And that is where uh, you and other IT staff may be working. That makes it convenient, okay? It's an air-conditioned space, uh, temperature-controlled environment, and that may be where you're operating so that you're there near the equipment at that level. And from there, that equipment connects to a router, and that router leaves the base and heads off to the rest of the network, okay? Whether it's connected to other military networks, whether it's connected to be able to actually bring the internet in, whatever the case might be, all right? But those devices are built by companies like Cisco, uh, switches and routers, we're talking. They are built by companies like Juniper, companies like Brocade, Okay, and they require someone to not only initially get those devices sent to that base in cardboard boxes, and then you take them out and you build them and put them together and load all the software on them so that they will work out mounted in buildings or mounted in your server room, whatever it might be, and at whatever level of the network they work at, but also, once they're landed out there in the network, they have problems. Things happen. 
Sometimes they go down and they need to be restarted. Sometimes they have links that have problems and you need to go out there and figure out and do some troubleshooting and find out what's happening, okay? These are the jobs of the network engineer or the network administrator. You're gonna use both software at your desk to be able to monitor your network, how it's functioning. How is data flowing? Is it smooth? Are there problems? Are there choke points? Is there something that's just gobbling up all your bandwidth on the base? You are gonna get tasked to find that out. They're gonna to come to you and they're gonna say, as a network administrator, find out why I'm having latency at this building. What's happening there? What's going on? Why are issues happening in this building over here? Why are all the users on this one floor having a problem over there? These are the kind of troubleshooting that you will do as a network administrator. And I find it very interesting, I enjoy it, because I look at it like it's a puzzle. And if all the pieces are in place, it works. But if one piece is out of place, it doesn't. And so you're kind of like figuring out what isn't the problem first, and then you help to identify what the problem is. So that's why I like uh, working in networking, and I've, I've, I've enjoyed it, because it's like if you enjoy puzzles, you'll enjoy it, okay? The other side of troubleshooting is going to be not from your desk looking at monitor software that goes out and tracks every aspect of the network to identify problems, but also you're going to have to go to those devices physically. And that's one of the reasons why I also like uh, networking is because you actually get to work with hardware. Okay, It's not just a software job but you're working with hardware and I like that. Um, a lot of times the, the equipment, the Cisco equipment is heavy. It has to get mounted into racks, all right? Uh, and you get cut, you get injured doing that. I, I always joke that network administration, network engineering, it's the only IT job where you can bleed, okay? Uh, because the equipment is heavy and it's dirty too. Uh, it gets a lot of dust on it. It attracts a lot of dust because it's putting a lot of air through it to keep it cool. And so it's a dirty job. Uh, you will have minor injuries. You know, the, the most injury that you can look at is, is if you injure your back because you're not properly lifting some of this heavy equipment, okay? But uh, minor injuries. You'll get cut up, though, in your job. You'll, you'll get plenty of fingers pinched, okay? but you're gonna go do physical troubleshooting on site with testing equipment, okay? You'll have network testing gear that's gonna look at whether you have fiber work that's down, okay? Some of your fiber might be having problems. You'll have testing gear for that. You might have testing gear uh, to make sure that your ethernet cables are functioning properly. Do they have a problem? Sometimes they get pinched, damaged, uh, rodents will eat them, okay? Uh, you have to start fixing those types of connectivity problems, all right? And all of this is based upon the idea that as a, as a network administrator, as a network engineer in that field, troubleshooting, you're gonna start out at the most base layers, and those layers are gonna be that layer one where you have this copper cable, you have this fiber, and is that working? And then you start working your way up to the different layers, okay, the, the layers that build your network, uh, going into software, going into the switching devices, going into the routers, okay? Uh, and you will start to learn IP addressing and start being able to troubleshoot IP addressing because a lot of times, uh, that will be part of the problem that you're dealing with is that devices are not connected be on a level of the IP addresses even though they're connected by layer one and they can see each other. They still can't talk to each other and that's all part of your job. Some of the other devices that you're going to work with as a network administrator, you're going to work with VPN devices. And these are hardcore devices that are designed so that bases can talk to each other in a secure fashion. And it appears to the networks that they are connected together logically in the same place, even though they may be separated by great distances. 
<clears throat> these VPN devices are, you know, they're beefy and they're heavy. So you'll be working with those types of devices. You'll be working with firewalls. Depending upon the size of your base, you may be managing those firewalls or you might have a separate team that does cybersecurity and they will manage, <clears throat> excuse me, they will be managing that uh, firewall. But physically, you might be landing that firewall. You might be getting new ones in and setting it all up and mounting that firewall, even if it's managed by a separate team, okay? You might be doing the physical work with that. You also have devices like WAN accelerators, which makes it so that large amounts of information can travel to another military base and then it gets received there easier. And it gives you basically, without having to have more bandwidth, it gives you the ability to transfer more data. Very popular now is uh, the addition of WAN accelerators going into uh, the networks, all right? These are some of the other types of devices that you're gonna work with. Now, we'll talk a little bit about server work uh, in another chapter of this series, okay? But the reality is, again, that if you have a team that's managing servers at your base, you may have to do the physical work because that's just part of your job. Uh, you may actually receive the servers, have to set them all up, start landing some basic software on them, putting IP addresses on them, mounting them in the network, making sure that that team can connect to it and then they start working with it, okay? But uh, the physical device, you may have a separate team if it's a large enough base that's working with servers or you will be, okay? One good thing about all this to think about is you learn a lot of different kinds of equipment. Uh, as a network engineer, you're gonna be learning a lot of different types of gear. And as the years go by, again, you wanna build that folder of how to work with it, okay? And it becomes like your Bible. You will be putting uh, all the different types of troubleshooting that you do with different devices. Because what if you hardly ever work on a device? Do you only work on it once a year maybe, all right? It just sits there and runs, it does its job. You, you can't really remember the type of troubleshooting that you did a year ago. So you have to put this down on paper, make a step-by-step -step troubleshooting and build that Bible and that's part of your experience is that that goes with you, all right? Uh, building a, a troubleshooting guide along the way and how to also set up these devices step by step, all right, in your own language that helps you how to do it. You'll be working with other members of the IT team, all right, because they're gonna bring you Cisco phones. That's part of your job too. They're gonna bring you Cisco phones and say, these say five phones are gonna go into an office that we're setting up on the other side of the base. And you have to take those Cisco phones, you have to connect them to the network, put IP addresses on them, make sure that they're uh, able to function on the network. You also use the Cisco software to make sure that those phones are set up with everything that they need, the latest software, they're set up to work on your network, they're accepted on your network. And then your desktop support personnel may take that out and mount it at the desk. Or again, if it's a small enough base, you might do something like that as well. Uh, you will also receive Cisco phones that have problems, okay? They'll bring them to you and they'll say, this thing stopped working and you have to troubleshoot that device. And you can imagine that once you start troubleshooting these Cisco phones uh, and you get to be good at it, that's a valuable skill. So, you'll start to build your network engineer skills over time. Okay. We talked about what you uh, are going to be doing as a network engineer, all right? Uh, what devices you're gonna be working with and the types of troubleshooting that you're gonna deal with and the work that goes around it, as far as getting these devices, setting them up, landing them, monitoring them and troubleshooting them throughout your base. All right, so the next step that I wanna talk about is what sort of certifications you should have to get this job, all right? Again, because it's an IT job working with the government, uh, you're going to need your CompTIA Security Plus. Now there are alternatives. Uh, there's also the CompTIA 
a CASP certification, which is a level higher. And you might say to yourself, why not get that? Because later down the line, it's going to look good on my resume. And it covers that uh, cybersecurity cert requirement that all IT work needs in the government, all right? However, the CompTIA Security Plus might be something you already have because you've already had it from working desktop support or maybe you already had it in the civilian world. It's a very common certification to have and probably the best baseline certification to get you into the IT world, especially working with the government, all right? So that's first and foremost, is you have to have a cybersecurity cert, a baseline cybersecurity cert. Uh, the next is you're gonna wanna get, uh, in my opinion, the best is gonna be to get the Cisco CCNA. And this video is being recorded in 2021. There is a new CCNA that's out in 2021 and it is probably one of the best IT certs that I've ever studied for. Um, I've had the CCNA for some time and my older CCNAs are expiring. The CCNA security and the CCNA uh, wireless I had before. Because I was doing a lot of Wi-Fi work. There's a lot of Wi-Fi build out that's happening in uh, government work. And as a network administrator, you're gonna be the Wi-Fi person, plain and simple. All the routers, everything to do with Wi-Fi, network engineers are going to be handling that. Uh, but those are expiring now because Cisco put them all together under one CCNA cert, and it's a great cert. And you can study it online. Uh, you can also find a lot of companies that you can go actually sit and do training for the CCNA and work with equipment to get that certification. There's a lot of those sort of like uh, boot camps or uh, actual IT schools, things like that, all right? But that Cisco CCNA is gonna be an important one to get that job. Now you may continue to study and get your CCNP certification as well, or you may already have it. Fantastic, that's great. And you can continue training and, and, and studying that, and it just helps you move up to better paying positions over time get more knowledge and move up to higher paying jobs. Uh, another great cert to look at are gonna be for the other types of equipment that you're gonna be working on. So Juniper makes its own certifications as well. Brocade, uh, they make their own certifications as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Those certifications may not be an alternative for the CCNA but they still look great on a resume, all right? They really look good. It shows that you're working with a, a myriad of equipment. Um, also, there are certifications that go with uh, unique devices that you might get in a firewall or something like that. That company may have a, a certification that you can study for online and there's nothing wrong with getting those. It just looks great on your resume, all right? So those are gonna, but those are gonna be your base two that you should have for getting into network engineering uh, for these overseas contracting jobs, you wanna have a baseline uh, cybersecurity cert and get your CCNA, that's gonna help out the most. All right, so we went through talking about uh, network uh, engineering now and the types of work that you're gonna be doing as a network engineer, types of equipment you're gonna use, the certifications that will help you get into that line of work as well. All right, and I hope this is helpful. Uh, again, this is a particular uh, field that uh, I know pretty well. I've been working in it for a while. And we're gonna continue on to discuss other types of jobs, not just in IT, but other types of contracting jobs uh, as well, of what, what you can expect and what will be uh, required to get into that work. All right, so I hope that this has helped. And leave a comment. Let me know if there's something that you want me to cover in particular. And uh, have a nice day.